Whenever you think thoughts, have you ever wondered who exactly is listening to them? Is it really possible for us to hear ourselves think? The average person today views consciousness as a monolith. There is simply you or the self. However, this thing that we commonly view today as the ego or the self may not be a thing at all, but rather a group of things. Or to phrase it another way, there are a group of yous. Or at the very least, there isn't a single you. We have seen this emerge within psychology, whether you take the Freudian route and believe in the conscious and subconscious, later termed the unconscious mind, even if you approach it more spiritually or theologically, that even represented within the Abrahamic tradition, there is this acknowledgement that whatever entity, this entity that I term the mystery, it is made up of several different versions of itself. Even within the Abrahamic text within Genesis, when everything was being created, when it was time to create the human being, there was very interesting language used. It said, let us make a man. And there is some sort of consciousness or entity that is talking amongst itself. This has been interpreted many ways, but we have all come to call this the Trinity, which is something that still perplexes many people. And it doesn't matter how you choose to look at it. The fact of the matter is consciousness is very mysterious and the rabbit hole is quite deep. The subconscious or unconscious mind is like our internal version of the Marianas Trench, the actual truth of what lies there still stumps all of us to this day. Think about that. We've had consciousness for as long as we can literally remember. And despite the fact that we know how to split atoms, go to Mars, we can pretty much do anything. We still cannot crack this mystery of consciousness. In this video, I want to try and explore a thread that I have been following. There is a picture I would like to paint and hopefully you can walk away here with a deeper understanding about this mystery. If you would like more context on the things that I'm going to say here and go over, I have a video on my locals where I give my interpretation on this story of the Garden of Eden and this creation myth. I, I talk about what I think could have transpired and many of the things that I'm going to say here sort of build upon that. Also, check out my previous videos. I assure you that they are all interesting here and build a good framework for some of the things I'm going to say. So to get started, I have come to the conclusion or I have made this sort of analogy or comparison on this channel that the mystery for any of my new listeners, if you choose to call it God, Allah, uh, Vishnu, the Tao, it's all, to me, it's all pointing to the same direction. Whatever this thing is, it is the, the closest archetype we have for it is the artist. And I believe that life is more akin to a piece of art. It is more akin to a story that is unfolding and being written, which in my previous video within the title, it is mentioned how life sort of feels like a movie. I talk about it in that video, so check it out. But the thing about art, the tricky thing about stories is there has to be someone to tell it to. You may be thinking, that's not true. You can do art for your own private enjoyment. In actuality, we are not permitted the experience of being isolated and alone. Everything within reality, everything that we are experiencing is interconnected even right down to your own consciousness, that even if you were somehow 
off in space somewhere, away from every other human being. The fact of the matter is, as we'll talk about in this video, that you are comprised up of various different yous. And these different yous are able to all marvel at whatever you create. This is how you are able to be a witness to your own art a witness to your own creativity. There will always be something else for you to reference off of. But if you imagine it that you were the mystery, if you were everything, there was nothing outside of you, there would be no other entity, no other body to experience you other than you. It is sort of like the legend or the myth of the vampire that when it tries to look at its own reflection, there is nothing there. So you could exist in a state that is completely outside of the scope of our imagination. You could exist in a state to where nothing really happens or you could begin to make things happen. And as a result, in order for you to tell this story, if you are in a position to where you could do anything, the first thing you would do is split yourself in half. You would make a, another version of you. Now you have someone else to tell the story to, but it wouldn't be a clone of you. If you just exactly copied yourself, then you would know the story before you even told it. It would be a bifurcation of you. Whatever you lacked, this other version of you would have sort of like a puzzle piece. And these two bifurcated sides with two equal and opposite perspectives, they too themselves could begin to bifurcate and they could branch down in these sort of fractalized patterns for as far as you can imagine. Now, what I have just described is the basic premise of just about every theology or spiritual practice that has any sort of opinion or mythos on the origination of all things. This is ultimately what they all boil down to. This is why there is always this sort of antithetical character within theologies. This is how you can get something like a character of Satan or Lucifer, that there is this dissension, you know, within the, the, the myth, this, this character of Lucifer is cast out of this divine realm. There is some sort of rebellion. This is how you can get this dissenting perspective for those who are more mystically inclined. This is also the case within Gnosticism, how you have the supreme being that emanates down and forms all of these various different archons and things like that. Bouncing off of Gnosticism, we can go right back and see it in philosophy with, you know, at least within the West, our most studied and celebrated thinker of Plato and all of the various thinkers from this time period. This was the general view or perspective that they had, this oneness at the top that sort of differentiates downward. And to bring it all back to where I was, they're in this original state that we cannot imagine of, you could call it oneness, it has been called a void, an abyss, chaos, it is unfathomable to us. Whatever took place, something began to make things happen, and this makingness of things happen is, it is facilitated via language. And this isn't just language how I'm talking to you now, but it, within the scripture, this entity says, let there be, 
and there was, because what language is, it is a dissecting tool. It is to call out specificity from chaos, from a void of infinite potential. You actually assign one single potential to it. When you say, let there be light, you dissect infinite meaning. And you, as a result, you have this bifurcation. You have light and you also have the darkness. And what I believe is the actual internal world of the human being, this consciousness that we are able to experience, it somehow mirrors this or it it is an image of it. As the scripture says, it is an image of or some sort of reflection of this grander archetypal story that I'm laying out here. And what I think, for example, the Abrahamic Christian myth with this whole story of Adam and Eve and all of these things that take place within the Bible, I think that it is some sort of artistic representation of our the development of our own subconscious. A mystery, for example, doesn't have a subconscious like we do. It is all-knowing, all-powerful. It can talk to and examine any part of its own consciousness whenever it wants. But we have this, it's kind of like the Freudian iceberg of the conscious mind. We have this conscious mind and beneath there is this huge mystery that we don't know anything about. And what I believe actually exists there is something akin to other entities. And what we see, for example, within this Abrahamic creation myth with Adam and Eve, there is some sort of fight for control, some sort of objection to who gets to have the the overriding perspective within the garden of eden there is this supposed peace this supposed oneness however there is this introduction of the character of the serpent how does the serpent something that has a dissenting opinion how does it even exist within this supposed paradise. Within Gnosticism, there is the character of the Demiurge, who, if you aren't familiar with Gnosticism, it is very intertwined with the various Christian myths and also various philosophies, as I've mentioned before, with Platonic thinking. This Demiurge is sort of the antagonistical character of this belief set. The funny thing about these two characters is, though it is represented in two different artistic modes of storytelling, they both essentially accomplish the same thing. This is giving birth to experience and perspective. The serpent accomplishes this by convincing these two characters of Adam and Eve to eat of the tree. And the Demiurge accomplishes this. It essentially traps energy in some sort of material medium. In both cases, the one thing that is apparent is there is a transition from a, a sort of state of being that is akin to oneness. I call it, it is a pure imaginative state. There is a transition from this state into one of perspective, into one of the ego, into one of complexity and differentiation, into one of dualism. It is the actual birth of the material existence. A perfect example of this is the prism. It's it's kind of like the Pink Floyd album cover. It is a very famous image. You have this pure white light that is refracted through a prism. On one side, you have this pure white light. And as it passes through material, there is this bifurcation, and it forms what we call the visible light spectrum. The key word here being visible. 
Visible means experience. You have the initial point of white light, aka this oneness, and it is captured in a material medium. This is the same motif of the demiurge. As it is passed through this material medium, it gives birth to experience. It gives birth to complexity and differentiation. This prism is the, the fruit of knowledge and of good and evil. And I think that this is a good example to where you can actually visualize this initial state of oneness that is bifurcated, this initial state of infinite potential that gives birth to complexity. And what I think is displayed within these stories, what I think actually happened, if you use the Freudian iceberg of consciousness as an example, that before the entire iceberg was submerged. There was no consciousness. The entire iceberg was submerged beneath the waters of reality, whatever you want to call it. And this total submergence, we were in some sort of, I call it a pure imaginative state where anything was possible. But something happened. There was some sort of event that took place that caused this fully submerged iceberg. It caused a portion of it to rise up and poke up out of the water. There are various entities within our subconscious and one of them caused this to happen or something like that. But this raises so many more questions than it answers. I know many people who are atheists, they just really like to leave it there and say, well, it's all just in our heads. But I think that it's kind, that's kind of like sticking your head in the sand. What exactly are these entities? Where, where do they come from? If you want to just say, you know, it's just you. It's your the various different sides of the human, the human soul. Then what in the hell am I? What what does it mean to be you? Even if you don't believe in any sort of external power out there, you wind up asking the same questions that any theist would. What are we and why are we like this? Any atheist would just say it's a mystery. And my response to that is, yes, that is exactly my point. It is the mystery. The mystery is exactly that. Something, the unknown itself is a thing in and of itself, and it beckons us and calls all of us. As I said earlier, it is like the joining of two puzzle pieces, the known and the unknown becoming one, the imagination becoming an actuality. It is quite the rabbit hole. Perhaps it is the subject of another video, so I'll leave things here. Like the video if you found it interesting. Comment and tell me your thoughts on all of this. Um, check out my Locals page. I, I'm going to do another video there. And I also have an Instagram channel. So check out that as well. And until next time, y'all have a blessed day.